Okay, so I thought I'd just um, go over how to apply this collar. So you can see here, um, I've prepared my button bands and I have this, um, I guess, shaping notch here. Um, so this is the raw part. Um, this corresponds with the center front and we bagged this out, turned it through. Um, and this top edge here is finished. And the same on the other side. So um, this is the side that's going to go like under here. Um, this is finished here and it's um, raw there. And it's been top stitched down. Um, on the inside, all, also I've bound all the seams. So that's done. Um, I've also prepared the collar and I've made another video on um, preparing the collar. Um, so... Um, we have our collar here and then um, the under collar and the um, stand here and then the stand lining. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold the collar in half. And on the stand, I'm just going to pop a pin in just to mark um, the center back there. And then I, I'm going to identify my notches. Oops, I can just see I haven't notched it into the interfacing. So I'm just going to make sure it's the interfacing's notched as well, just so you can see it more easily. So those are my notches for my shoulder seams. Okay. Um, so let's look at this ne neckline. Um, I'm just going to trim back this excess bias here. the shoulders and um, okay so um, this is the right side of the back so I'm going to start by pinning um, I'm just pinning kind of opening out this collar so I'm just pinning the under collar and collar stand side to that neckline um, so this centre back is going to line up with the centre back seam. Make sure you're not lining up with the top stitching. I'm just going to pop a pin in it. And then I'm going to line up that shoulder notch with my shoulder seam. This um, oiled wool that I'm using for this particular one is pretty... Um, it's got a bit of quite a bit of ease in it so that's uh, a bit of a blessing and a curse because <laughs> it does help you for sure um, but it can sometimes go against you a little bit as well if things stretch out but it's easy enough to ease it in okay here's um, the important part so this um, finished edge here is going to align with the finished edge of the collar can you see that so Basically, when it's done um, and it's sewn, we'll just have that attached right there. So that's the other place I want to pin that. Okay. And then I'm just going to match, match these curves. And there shouldn't be any ease. Should match pretty perfectly if you've um oops cut and sewn it accurately of course my situation is a little bit different because i'm using this boiled wool which is you know boiled wool is a funny creature it's kind of technically a knit but we treat it as a woven so <laughs> it's a bit of a bit of a strange beast i'm gonna do the same on the other side so just matching that um shoulder notch in there and then at the center front here okay which is here I'm just gonna match that with the folded under edge there now I mean what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to hand baste this seam and the reason I'm gonna do that is first of all this you know boiled wool is a bit of a pill sometimes <laughs> But also um, just to make sure that it's really nice. I mean, I think that, um, you know, collars, the way collars sit on coats and jackets or shirts, 
I guess any collar, really makes the garment um, beautiful. So um, this has a one centimeter or three eighths of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to just go ahead and hand baste that. And then um, I'm going to sew it. Um, and then I'll come back and show you the next step. Okay, so I have hand basted that in place. And I'm just going to sew it down using that three eighths of an inch or one centimeter seam allowance. I'm just making sure everything's matching as well as I can. I'm just holding this out of the way. Sometimes it helps to kind of fold it back a bit. Of course, sewing with a camera between you and the sewing machine isn't ideal either. Here we go. So when I'm um, sewing a collar, you know, we're sewing curves, you know, the curve of the neckline. And so helps to go slowly, helps to hand baste it. Um, and just, yeah, just do your thing. Um, remember that you can always go back and unpick just a small section if there's a, an issue. Um, even though hand basting takes a little bit of time, I find sometimes with things like this, it really helps because it means that I won't have to go back and redo it. So it's like short-term pain for long-term gain kind of thing. Just making sure everything's flat under there. This coat's, um, you know, because it's like made from coating, <laughs> from thick fabrics, designed to be made from thick fabric. You know, you obviously um, have a bit of thickness there, but um, shouldn't be a problem with your machine. You can see I have all kinds of stuff on my sewing machine table as I'm doing it, which is probably a bit dumb, but just um, going underneath, just to make sure um, none of this um, back stay is kind of flicked up or anything, just to make sure everything's flat. So I go and I just kind of turn my work as I need to. Just check those seams are sitting flat. Okay, here we go. Making sure these um, seams don't flip on me. Pretty good. Okay, and here we are coming to this end. Just gonna hold it out of the way again. Just gonna lift the presser foot and make sure everything is um, tucked under. I don't like to get my fingers under there for that bit. Just, I have sewn my finger before quite badly and trust me, <laughs> it's not good. Okay, so I'm just gonna go and check. So you can see that what will happen is this will get tucked up under there and then that will just fold nicely down there. Um, I'm just going to go around and check that I haven't um, folded any bits over that I don't want. Okay, I'm going to move the camera now um, and come back and just show you how I'm going to grade and clip that. Okay, so I've determined that things seem to be pretty good, no big issues. So then I just go ahead and I um, remove my basting stitches. Um, when I baste, I try and do it in like a contrasting color just so I can see it easily. Um, but I'm also really lazy, so I also use whatever's to hand. And it happened to be a couple of bobbins with some um, navy thread. <laughs> and navy really wasn't the most contrasting color, so there we are. <laughs> so I'm just going to go ahead. I don't really need to like unpick it per se. I'm just like hooking it under to just like yank it out, honestly. Um, that's all. Because basting is supposed to be easy to remove. Sometimes, you know, it gets like a little bit like stuck under, you know, where you sewed and then it gets a bit more stuck, but it's all good. Okay, here's some um, rust color basting thread. So what I actually do um, with my basting needles is um, I leave them threaded and just like so lazy. I just shove them back into my needle book threaded and that way like if I need to 
base something. I've got one that's probably threaded. It's pretty convenient. <laughs> um, and then I kind of just start off with that and, you know, I guess it's... I guess I could lie and say that it's because I'm trying to be sustainable, but actually it's just because I'm lazy and, um, you know, threading a new needle with uh, thread is, like, pretty boring, so I don't want to do that. <laughs> anyway. Um, okay. How are we doing here? I anchored it a little bit more sturdily on this end than I normally would, and that's just because of the nature of what we're, um, what we're doing. Okay, so here's that um, center front. You can see things are pretty good. Um, so what we'll want to do is we want to, you know, tuck all of this um, next thing that we just sewn, sewed, we'll want to tuck it up into that collar. But to do that, before we do that, we're going to want to grade and clip the seam. Um, so there's an awful lot of bulk here with all this, um, you know, binding and seams and all that stuff. So, um, Let's start doing some grading. So firstly, I usually avoid grading this first little bit initially. Uh, I'm not grading it back a whole lot just because um, it's easier to take more away. So I'm just uh, like, how much am I trimming back? Like quarter of an inch, not even, a few millimeters. And I'm trimming back um, the stand, so the interface stand. I'm not um, not cutting away any of the neckline. When it comes to grading and clipping, you know, you just go slow. You don't want to. Um, you don't want to cut into anything, like any of the garment and everything. So just, you know, make sure you've got some good light, which I don't really have right now. <laughs> um, and that you're just kind of going methodically. So see what I just did there, which was like kind of muscle through a thick bit. Don't do that. <laughs> Unless you're really sure that it's something you want to remove. Because um, you don't want to like clip away... Um, like if you, if it feels like you're so you're clipping two layers, you might be. Okay. So I've just flipped it around there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip into this curve. So we're just going to do clips. We don't have to, um, do V's out of this one. Um, that's what we're going to do first, just because of the kind of fabric this is, I'm not going to go too deeply. Like I'm not going to go too close to, um, I'm not going to go too close to that stitching line because, um, just because of the way it is. Um, I like to, um, clip into, like, seams, like, I've clipped right into that shoulder seam. Uh, I've got my fingers, like, just, like, underneath, like, kind of, like, rolling, um, the bits away that I don't want to clip into. Um, again, like, just be... Um, be wary of what you're clipping into. Just be aware of, you know, like what could happen quite easily is this back stay could kind of flip up like this and I could cut into that and then I have a great big hole and it would suck. <laughs> so I'm just like really going pretty, it might seem like I'm going fast, but I'm being careful. It's also, you know, like, I think everyone's had it where they've like had a really oopsie with this kind of thing and like it's just like no worse feeling but um you know you'll just you won't do it again I guess <laughs> it's like what I've got to say about that okay so I've kind of clipped into that now what I'm gonna do is like um treat these like look at that that's a shoulder seam right so I need to just get rid of like as much of this as I can without going I don't want to go too close to that stitching line so I'm just gonna usually cut these off at an angle like that like these ears I suppose they are right that's pretty good I'll do the other one the other thing you want to do is you want to make sure that like the bits that you're clipping off don't end up like staying permanently in your collar because you have a lump there of like just like a 
chunked off bit of um, fabric and that's not very nice. Um, so here's the center back and you can see it's quite bulky there. So what I'll do here is I'll just go in, I usually use something smaller like my clippers and I'll just kind of mine. <laughs> These clippers are a little bit blunt. I'm gonna get a better pair. Sorry, I managed to bump you. There we go. So I'm just kind of going in there, kind of mining out some of that bulk. You know, the whole point with grading is that you don't want everything to end like at the same level. So it's no point in just like trimming that away. Like I want to like trim some layers away more than others. I'm not doing a great job here. Um, but that's that's a fair bit better there. You can see how we're we doing here. Pretty good, I would say. Um, and okay. Now let's look at this um, this business here. Like there's a lot in here. So this is the uh, I guess it's the right front. Uh, there's that facing. And you can see these extra layers inside here. So I'm going to cut carefully cut away some of these layers. I don't want to go too close to here because I don't want like little thready bits to hang out. I center front, 3D bits. That's really a technical term. <laughs> and all the time I'm just like checking that when I put that over, there's not going to be any, you know, um, raw edges. Oh, there's a bit of my basting thread that shouldn't be there. Right? Like I don't want to clip. Like if I, if I cut this away like at an angle and when I went and did this, then maybe I'd get some like um, frayed bits um, hanging out and that would be bad. Um, Okie dokie. Let's look at that other side. Oof, look at that, that's a mess, eh? So much bulk there. So again, I'm gonna like mine. And take, I'm taking away, like I'm leaving like the outside bits kind of um, untouched, but I'm, you can't really see, I'm sorry, it's like black on black, but I'm just kind of mining out some bulk. That's pretty good. Um, here's a bit where the um, stand and the, um, and the under collar are meeting. Okay, so I'm just gonna, Grade some more of that away. It's pretty good. Okay, that's all feeling excellent. Okay. So the way I like to finish the collar, um, so actually I'm going to go over and I'm going to press this seam up into the neckline. I'm going to do that first. Ooh, this is still a bit bulky, eh? Let me, just assessing it, seeing what I can clip off. Yeah, that's better. So I'm going to give it a good press, pressing the seam up into that neckline. Let's see how it is on this other side. If it's equally bulky. Yeah, you can just kind of feel with your fingers as you go. It's like, ooh, brutal. Okay, that's better. So I'm going to press it up and then I'm going to come back and show you how to pin it. Okay, so I gave it a press up there. Um, I used a ham and I just had the ham on the flat and just like laid it over. Any curved seam, it's really helpful to use a ham. You can see this is where I've already um, turned up. I'd already turned that up before I sewed it and that's in the other video on the collar. Okay so I'm just going to start pinning and I'm definitely going to hand baste this and I'm going to hand stitch some of it. So I think that it looks nicest personally if like the um, lining part is like machine stitched and then just this part here is hand stitched because it's a really neat finish. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking this folded edge and I'm just overlapping it down to just cover um, that stitching line. 
The reason I'm hand based things like this, I'm going to just match this notch to that shoulder is, so I'm just going to, you can see it more clearly here. I just want to make sure I cover all of that business. Um, is because when you, um, when you hand baste or hand stitch anything really, you can make these micro adjustments that you just, you know, I don't care how good you are at sewing on a machine. Like you cannot get the stitch by stitch adjustments that you can, um, when you are, um, hand sewing. So you can see like, this is a linen, you know, um, was this a great choice? Not super stable. <laughs> But, and it's not interfaced, so um, it's going to stretch out a little bit on these curves. And so I've got to make sure that things are like kind of easing in if they need to just a little bit. So here we go. Um, just overlapping it just, just over that first line of stitching. Maybe I will stitch this whole thing back down by hand. We'll see. I'll baste it first regardless. Okay, so just make sure, making sure it's overlapped every time. When I'm doing it, I'm kind of making sure that I'm pulling it straight down and not like, um, you know, skewing it to the side at all. I love sewing with wool. It's, um, I love how like malleable it is. You know, you can just, <laughs> it forgives any sins, right? Like it just helps you, helps your, everything you make just look really good because you can press it really well and have it, um, just the finish is just always so good. Not great. Let's do that again. Okay, so I've got it pinned in place. Now I'm going to hand base that down and I'll be back. Okie dokie. So I have um, hand basted that down. And then at this point, what I'd like to do is I'd like to just check that it's going to roll nicely. Um, and it is. Uh, just that it's not going to like kind of, uh, if it's not pulling, like just say you pull this too tight here, the collar wouldn't want to roll over and that would suck. So <laughs> I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to, I am going to machine um, this down just to edge stitch or pin stitch very close to the edge. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an invisible stitch for the, just this portion here, just like the wool to wool section. Um, I think it's going to look nicer like that. And then, um, there's just one more step that I'd like to show you after that. Okie dokie, so I'm going to just show you how I'm going to hand sew this down. Um, I've got some waxed thread. I'm just gonna, I've got a big knot in there, I'm just going to um, hide that in my seam. Just tuck that in. Okay, so just gonna take a small bite I'm not going all the way through um, to the other side actually I'm just gonna start it back a little bit further it's just a bit there we go so I'm just kind of getting <laughs> wrangling things into the right position okay I want to start here um, so maybe I'll try to zoom you in a bit there we go um, so I'm just going to take a small bite here and then just a small bite and then I'm going to run it through this um, tunnel here. I'm just going to do it really small. So I want to hold it securely and I can do that in one step. So I'm taking a small bite here and then going across just, just 
a few millimeters. And as I'm going and just making sure that I'm overlapping it exactly with that last stitching line. So this is what I mean about like having so much control when you're hand sewing um, compared to machining. Like stitch by stitch, I can determine exactly how I want that seam to sit. I also want, you know, this to be just invisible. Like I don't want to see a line of stitching there. Like if the, you know, if you wear the shacket open and, um, you know, this bit flicks back, like it's much nicer to be able to see just like a clean, clean edge. Okay, and just tucking that in just a tiny bit more. In places where I need more control, I put my stitches closer together. Making sure everything's embedded in there properly. Okay, you can see it's really invisible there. And I'm going to just um, go through to the other side because, of course, that's going to be hidden by the collar. And I'm going to just take maybe an extra stitch here just to reinforce it. And then I'm going to just tie it off here. Just take a stitch and then go through the loop. Oops, I just unthreaded my needle. Oh, I didn't unthread it. The needle, the thread broke. Just do that again. There we go. Just through that loop. Maybe a third time. Don't want it coming unstitched. Okay, so um, I'm going to do that on the other side. The final step is actually, uh, because this is such a, you know, big collar and collar stand, it's easy for it to kind of flap about like this. Oops, I'm going to zoom you out again. It's easy to, for it to kind of flap about. Um, so what we do is we can sew um, a row of stitching like in like a large zigzag just to attach the stands together. Um, you can do that or you can um, prick stitch along here. Um, actually, I might do that. I might do some hand stitching. Anyway, um, basically you want to connect it to get to connect these two sides together. But just with the way this is looking, yeah, I might do that. Anyway, um, the instructions are in the booklet. Um, just like honestly draw a line with um, chalk and then just um, sew it straight stitch um you could if you wanted to crack out your decorative stitches on your machine do that you could sew in a pattern like you could kind of like um free motion quilt it or whatever could be kind of cool so it's up to you um anyway i hope that um helped uh with your collar attaching <laughs>